Hello, welcome to day nine of my series for healing whiplash and increasing neck mobility. Today I'm going to be working on the lovely Molly. Let's go ahead and get started. If you don't have time to watch this video right now, go ahead and save to your watch later and just watch whenever you get a chance. So by day nine, we should be um, at a place where we can do deep tissue pretty safely. And this is really the day that I would be doing the most intense work. So that doesn't mean that I'm going to just rush into it. So I'm going to just kind of ease into this massage like I do, like I've done the last eight videos. And I'm just going to start walking these shoulders out. It's really good if you can get the shoulder joints to relax and get this deltoid muscle to relax as well before trying to do deep tissue on the SEM. And that's the main neck muscle that I'm going to be focusing on today. And I find that it really puts my clients at ease when I just uh, offer a little bit of reasoning behind um, why I do certain techniques. This gets the synovial fluid moving. It gets this joint just a little more open. And I'm just uh, trying to fit in as much as I can without the oil before I get a little messier. So I'm going to just warm up these occipital muscles and just doing little circles. This is really great prep work to do before deep tissue in that SEM. And I like to do a fair amount of dry work warm up um, when I'm working on someone who has been in a car accident or experienced um, trauma. You really want to be clear about how much swelling there is before you're trying to do deep tissue. And I've talked about that in this series quite a bit. So at this point, you know, I should have a, a really good idea of how my client's progressing, how much the swelling is going down, and if the swelling isn't going down, then there may be something more major going on, like a herniated disc or something like that. So it's just really important to keep track of the inflammation. You don't have to think too much about these compressive circles, just following that hairline and helping the head to relax, the neck to relax. And I'm going to do just a little bit of scalp. And you might be thinking, well, that's weird to do scalp before deep tissue, but it's really not. I just like to encourage my client to really relax before working deeper. And I don't always, every massage is different. If you can um, encourage your client to relax their temples, they automatically kind of relax their jaw and that opens up the sternocleidomastoid muscle, which is that SEM muscle that I'm going to be doing deep tissue on. Definitely making sure that my arms are supported this whole time. Trying to do this kind of work with floating arms is pretty exhausting. And I'm actually just going to land on these temples. It's 
really good if you can encourage your client to relax their jaw as you move into deeper work in the neck. You can even walk your way down towards the masseter muscle in the jaw. And this is all intentional prep work for the deeper work we're going to be doing. It can feel really good to hold this for a little bit longer. The masseter can get a little confused when you land on it because it's not worked on very often. Even if you only take, you know, two to five minutes for a warm up, if you do it with intention and you have a clear plan, you can accomplish a lot. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my oil and we're going to get started with the bulk of the massage. So I'm going to go ahead and um, just do a few sweeping effleurage strokes to start, applying the oil and just touching on these pectoral muscles a little bit. It's definitely a misconception that you thinking that you have to go as deep as possible to do deep tissue effectively that's really not the case so i try to stay um just underneath my client's pain threshold so it's like a discomfort but it's not really a pain um, it can be interpreted that way if it's their first time but discomfort is not bad I have um, some male athletes that I've worked on in the past and they have this idea that they need to be in extreme pain like the whole time to be making progress and that's just not true. If anything, you can actually damage the muscle tissue if you go too hard too fast. In our last video, we focused a lot on the upper traps and the work that we did then is going to really help us out now. So when you get those upper traps to actually let go and create more space there, it automatically creates more space in the neck and hopefully helps the SEM feel safer and in less of a protective mode because it's really the SEM's job to keep the neck safe, especially when um, whiplash happens. So I'm just gradually starting to hone in on the SEM area and I am going to work on this attachment site, but I'm trying to let the oil absorb a little bit so I don't get oil in Molly's hair. And when you're doing these effleurage strokes, it can feel really, really good to just include the deltoid muscles. And just letting my hands be really relaxed so that I can wrap around the curves of the shoulders and neck in a way that feels really good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and land on this mastoid process. Just 
just above the ear and I'm going to do some compressive circles and this is a great way to kind of step into the more detailed work of the SEM. I find the biggest mistake that therapists make with deep tissue is just not taking enough time for to warm up the soft tissue. Um, it's just really important. And just I'm gonna turn the head a little bit and I'm gonna start with the bulk of our massage today. I will, throughout the massage, I will just throw in some broad effleurage strokes like this just to help Molly relax, giving myself a little break because when you're working on the SEM, it does require a good bit of concentration. So, all right, so we've landed on the SEM and I'm just going to start working my way down. I find that um, people tolerate deep tissue a lot less in this muscle than most areas of the body. So just keep that in mind as you um, work. So we are on day nine. So your client, your friends should be pretty familiar with what it feels like to have this area worked on. So it's going to be hopefully easier to start to go a little bit deeper or maybe a good bit good bit deeper since we're on day nine. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some compressive holds and I'm going to start working my way down this muscle. I like to hold for a good five to 10 seconds. And as I release, I continue that motion down. So it's not a sensation of being poked. You're really working through that muscle tissue, stretching it out, flushing it out. If you slip off, don't worry about it. That's really, um, doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It just means you have plenty of work to do in that muscle. You might explore different um, levels of tautness. Make sure that when you're turning your client's head that they're not lifting their shoulders because that might mean that there's some pain somewhere. And if you do feel like you're slipping off um, the muscle, maybe you're, you're moving a little too fast. So just, you know, take it easy when you're doing deep tissue and just really ease into it. And little subtle things can make a really big difference. Like maybe as you start to do this deeper work, working the muscle from different angles can really help. So if you're just pressing straight down, sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes you need to go in interiorly more and just play around and just see how the muscle is responding best. So this can start to feel, especially as we increase the pressure just gradually, this can start to feel really intense. So I like to just give my client little breaks. So I might just land on that mastoid process again and just do some circles. Just checking in with my client, making sure their shoulders are relaxed. I'm going to throw in just that effleurage, just helping everything to stay nice and relaxed.
sometimes if I feel like my clients getting a little um, just tired of having this area worked on, I'll actually move between the right and the left maybe two times. And I find that can really, um, I'm able to make more progress that way with some people. And I like to just throw in some lighter strokes in between that, those compressive holds. And also, you know, keep your expectations in check. We are on day nine, but that doesn't mean that the neck is going to be perfectly healed. We should be making a good bit of progress. And that's, that's good enough. So at this point, you know, if your client is responding well, you can start going pretty deep. But in between those compressive holds, it's really important to just do a broader stroke along that muscle. And you might find that you find some trigger points that just need, um, that are pretty obvious that need more attention. And I am going to walk my way down to these suboccipitals. And I like to make sure that I work on this area either before or after that deeper work in the SEM. Usually if it's after, I'm not going to go quite as deep. So we're winding down. It's really important to um, shift gears when you're after you've done deeper work you want to make nice doesn't have to be anything fancy some effleurage is just perfect and i do like to do something for both sides and um, if you're doing this at home, I would encourage you to do the left side. I'm only going to do the right side today. When you're doing Afflerose, just stay as relaxed as you can. Make sure that you're not just working with your arms. Even if you're seated, sitting down, you want to be working from your core. just a little stretch of the neck and then that is all for today thank you for joining me today i look forward to seeing you for day 10 of this series if you did enjoy today's video you should check out our patreon page where you'll find some really great content as well i look forward to seeing you there